shapes. These are just a couple on the screen that I've done. So I'm going to jump right in and show you what I mean. And then obviously you can decide which way is the easiest way to do it for you. But I just thought I'd give you another option. So we're in Inkscape. I'm going to start off first of all by using one of the basic shapes. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on the stars and polygon icon. I'm going to make sure I've got the star or triangle or whatever it is shape up here and I've got eight corners you can play about with this yourself but for now I'm just going to leave it like that you can see I've got a star on the end of my cursor I'm going to click and drag it out and then I'm going to click the select icon to select it now while it's like this I'm going to go to edit down to clone, create tile clone and that brings up this new box and then before I do anything I'm going to hit the reset button because I don't know what settings are in here from the last time I used Inkscape so if I click reset I know I'm starting from the beginning if you like so if you do the same you should be able to follow the steps along with me fairly simple but you do need to follow exactly what what I say so the first tab that should be on top is symmetry and that's p1 simple translation and we're going to leave it at that then we're going to come down here to rows the first box should say one and this next box will be the number of matting layers that you want so if you want 10 nested shapes you put 10 in here I'm just going to use six for now. Then we're going to come up here to shift and in under shift X under column, we're going to make that minus 100. So just type minus 100 and enter on your keyboard. Then we're going to go to the scale tab. Now in the scale tab under the column section in both X and Y, so that this top middle box and the one underneath it we're going to type minus 10 percent so minus 10 and hit enter and in the same underneath minus 10 and enter then we're going to come oh and um, one thing that i should should have said at the beginning sorry um, while your shape or whatever it is you've drawn is still selected down here normally you will have a fill or a stroke it needs to be unset against fill. Now, if yours has got a colour in there, I'll just put a... I'll just... I'll just click black, so there's a black there. What you need to do, where it's... Don't worry about the stroke, but on the fill. Or you want stroke to say none anyway, it probably will do. On the fill, right click and click um, unset fill. So it's got to say unset, not remove, but unset. Okay, now sorry, go back up here, go to the colour tab. And then here you've got hue and saturation and all that kind of thing that, to be honest with you, I don't understand. But basically... What you need to do under the column against the H, which is hue, in here you need to type a figure and anything between 10 and 50% works. So I'm going to just type 10% and then up here where it says initial colour, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to change it to red. You can change it to anything, it doesn't matter. And this is more visual, it doesn't affect how your cutting file will be created or ultimately how it will cut. It's just so you can see better on screen what you're creating so once i've chosen my color from this box i'm going to close that down so just to recap we've got symmetry simple translation p1 in shift we've got um minus 100 i'll just make sure it is minus 100 yeah and then in scale we've got minus 10 minus 10 and in color we've chosen a color and i'm going to click create and you'll see it's now created all my layers for me. Now, this is the same with other tutorials that I've shown you before. 
While this box is still selected, we can make other changes on here. So if I decide that I don't like the red on screen, I can come up here and I can change it to a different colour and I can click create and they'll change. I prefer the red visually. So we'll get rid of that and we'll click create. But as I say, the colour doesn't affect the cutting. It's more just for how you they look when, when they appear on your screen. So these are obviously clones and, and at the back of this that you can't see is our original black star and that's what's selected. So while this still has this bounding box around it, we're going to hit delete on our keyboard. I'm just going to move this out of the way for a middle. I'm going to get rid of this align box because I don't need it. Just put that out of the way. So now if I click to select, you'll see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. There are my six layers. I'll just undo those so they all line back up again. Okay, so they are all one cutting file. Now, let's just take it a step further. So we'll go back to our star. We're still on the star. We're still on eight corners and we'll drag it out and choose select. And while it's selected, we're going to go to path dynamic offset and that will give us one node up here which I'm not sure whether you can see or not I'll try and zoom in there just one node go back to my main screen and while that node is there I'm going to left click and drag out and I can start making other shapes so say I'm happy with that shape a flower shape bring this box back in all our settings are all still the same We've still got six layers. I'm going to change this to a different colour. I'm going to make this a, a greeny colour. Close that down and I'm going to click create. And that's now given us those. Again, while this back one is still selected, hit delete on our keyboard. Move this out of the way. And again, I'm going to select one, two, three, four, five and six you can see I've got six layers that all nest perfectly so that's another one I'm just going to hold the control key down and resize those all together just so they're out of the way for now okay so what if we want to make our own shapes like I say you can do this on the scan and cut machine weld and you can add matting layers but you've got to do it individually this way it's once you've got your settings in here it's one click of a button so I'm going to Click on the square icon, hold the control, no, um, sorry, click on the square rectangle icon, drag a box out. While it's selected like this, not with the selection icon, I'm going to click on the edit paths and you can see there's a square in this corner and there's a circle here. On this circle, I'm going to click and drag down and that's going to round my corners. And if I click on the select icon, you can see rounded and I'm going to go to my circle I'm going to hold my control key down drag out a circle I'm going to drag an imaginary box around both of those to select them go to my align icon move this out of the way I'm going to center them vertically and horizontally and they're not centering so we'll do it again there you go close that down while they're both selected, I'm going to go to Path Union and weld them. So this is now one shape. And if I go to View, Display, Outline, you can see what I mean. So just go back to View, Display, Normal, so you can see. I'm going to bring my, my um, tiled clone box back in. All the settings are still the same. I'm just going to change the colour. Again, I'm only doing this visually for you to see it on screen. Choose a turquoise colour, close that down, click create. I'm going to close that down. While they're all still selected, I'm going to hit delete because that's going to delete the original shape. And then again, I'm going to select and you'll see I've got all my layers. Okay. Now I'm just going to undo all those so they all line back up again. Select, select everything. Put these all 
on my mat. Okay, I'm going to go file, save as, I'm going to call it test nested shapes dot svg and I'm going to save it on my desktop so I know where it is just for now. I'm going to minimize that down out of the way and I'm going to come to scan and cut canvas. I'm going to go to project, import svg, I'm going to look for my file I put it on my desktop, there it is, I'm going to choose it, there it is, Net test nested shapes SVG and click OK. And there they are all in canvas, you can see all the layers. Okay, I'm just going to hit undo so they all line up. Now, I'm just going to move that one out of the way and I'm going to come over here to the basic shapes. I'm going to choose a rounded rectangle and I'm going to drag it out a bit. I'm not going to size this or anything, it's just to show you. I'm going to click a circle. I'm going to drag that one out. I'm going to select them both. I'm going to come up here, go to edit, align, center, and middle. And then I'm going to click the weld icon, which is the first icon. And that makes me one shape, similar to how I made here in Inkscape. But to do the nested shapes in canvas, I'm going to size this down. Okay, now to do it in canvas, while it's selected, you come up here and you would choose outward and leave it at 0 0.2. And it's given us one outset layer. But in one click in Inkscape, we got six. So you'd now have to choose the outside layer go to outset, leave it on the same setting and click OK. Then you'd have to click on the outside one again, leave it on the same setting and click OK. So it can be done, it just takes a few more steps in Canvas. But as I said, in Inkscape you can actually use fonts. So you could use any of the fonts that are on your computer and make shapes from those. You can use any of the dingbat shapes, but as I've told you with working with fonts, there is um, an Inkscape video in the playlist on my YouTube channel. Whenever you're using a font, which includes a ding, dingbat, to get them to open in Canvas, when you bring the font onto your screen, you have to do path union first, and that will then make sure it opens in Canvas. So you would have to do that step before you then went and did all the clone steps. But watch the, watch the font Inkscape video and you'll understand what I'm saying and then come back to this. But I just find it a lot easier to do it in Inkscape because, as I say, once you've got your settings all set up, it's just the click of a button and you can create any shape you like. So I hope you found that useful. Please like, share and subscribe. Leave me any questions or comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.